We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or you can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange today. Good evening, welcome along to NUFC Matters. It is Talk of the Tune with me and Sid. Good to see you, Sid. How are you? Not bad, apart from this bloody hay fever. It's uh, it's all right. Every time I go on the golf course, my nose starts running and my eyes are streaming, but there you have it. And you've got your uh, you've got your new top on. Ah, uh, yes, I've got two of these. I got this and I've got this sort of short sleeved version as well. They're uh, lovely. Really, really nice, nice quality, feel very nice. Yeah, so good I'm stuff. Really, good really stuff. pleased, really pleased. GD Sport. And there's a little clue in your name uh, tonight on the screen to there is, Ramon, yes. uh, about what maybe you, you'll be looking at as far as your album's concerned with the music section uh, a little bit later on. We do know Rob's been having a few issues with his internet, so hopefully he will be on later. If not, uh, we'll try and catch him next week. And don't forget, Sid's got his own channel, Songs from the Attic 1977. is a YouTube channel um, with uh, music flavour and get yourself on there. What, what have you got on there? What have you been doing recently on there, Sid? Well, I've asked you for a while. Yeah, um, we've got all sorts on. We've got XTC, the Ramones, Genesis, Kate Bush, Led Zeppelin, Free. Um, I'm trying to think now. There's quite a wide variation of sort of older older style music, I think is the phrase I'm going to use. Uh, we're doing post-punk this week. We're doing post-punk albums this weekend. Uh, so that sort of gives you the general sort of flavour. Susie and the Banshees and stuff as well we've got on. So we've got quite a wide variation of uh, older style sort of music probably all sort of age groups, as it were. But we will be doing some more modern stuff as well. We're going to do Fontaine's DC soon as well. So trying to and keep it slightly up to date. But and the big, the, the big announcement in the music world this week being that Paul McCartney is going to be uh, playing the UK in December. So uh, yep. we've already been looking at it, me and me, mate. Um, well, it's a funny one, isn't it? Because we, my wife and I, we went to see him about 10 years ago. And I remember we'd watched that clip on... Um, Oh, the Olympics. I think they may have used some sort of tape alongside live performance. I don't think he was very happy about it in any way it went off. There was a slight power cut there. Yeah. Uh, Sid, Sid disappeared. I managed to pause the recording, <laughs> so we're back in. So there might be an, unprofe uh, an unprofessional glitch there. But anyway, yeah. we were talking about Paul McCartney, and you'd said so, that... Yeah, you know, I, was, I was saying that we we saw him in the, uh, like on the screen, and he wasn't great, you know, in terms of his sound and that. But then we went to see him at uh, the O2 in 2014. He was fantastic. He was on for three hours. He did a, a big acoustic section in the middle as well absolutely top top draw he was absolutely outstanding and his voice was great i don't know why his voice obviously it's 10 years ago so his voice might have, obviously will have changed since then but he was honestly what a what a musician i'm a genius overused word but mccartney is a genius let's be honest and uh he was magnificent he covered the whole back catalog the funniest uh, point of the gig was um he did a song for his current wife, and it wasn't very good, if I'm being brutally honest. It's not like Count Valentine or whatever. 
And then he goes, this one's the one I wrote for Linda. And he, he played Maybe I'm Amazed, which is one of the greatest ballads of all time. And it's the stark contrast between one song and the other was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but he was he was outstanding. And he did what my favourite solo song, 1985 Live, which was great off the Band on the Run album. He was, he was outstanding. He really was. Three hours as well. Top man. Yeah, well, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to head down to that, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, um, let's talk fixtures. Uh, the fixtures came out yesterday, nine o'clock in the morning. Um, I got them about half an hour early from one of my mates, and I thought it was a bit of a wind up, but he was absolutely yep. on the money. Um, and there they are in 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 glorious black and white, uh, with a tinge of blue. Uh, August the seventeenth is our first game, and it's Southampton at home. That's uh, TV. Uh, TV times pending, of course. Games can be moved and changed. But uh, yeah, Southampton at home, Bournemouth away, and Tottenham at home. Not a bad month, August. Great. Said. Compared to last year, which was absolutely farcical. I mean, we had something like Man City and Liverpool and Villa, of course. We had we had something like four of the top five or six teams, didn't we, to play within the first four weeks or so. So this is a this is a really nicely balanced fixture list. I mean, you could argue me is hard because you've got Chelsea and Arsenal and they're always quite tough games, but it's very fair. I think it's very, very fair. I mean, funnily enough, I predicted Southampton at home. So I, 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 I actually, I predicted Southampton away. I tell a lie. So I'm really quite chuffed. Um, so I'm, I'm actually, I'm chuffed with that. I, I, I thought we'd get them. I thought that's who we'd get. I thought it was either going to be Southampton or Leicester. It's tends to often, we for some reason always get one of the sort of promoted teams. So yeah, go please back. Can it knock that all out? Seven points first games as well. Looking for sort of um, more than achievable, more than achievable, and a good sort really gets us going. Why not go for nine? I think. But uh, did you notice there? Manchester United have got their eighth consecutive start to a campaign at home. Really? You, you've got more chance of winning the lottery. You've got more chance of winning the lottery than getting eight consecutive years at home, according to the, the computer. Um, <laughs> there's, there's nothing dodgy about it, obviously. Um, eight years, how are you? How are you, man? It's, was it like the League Cup? They got something ridiculous, like 10 or 11 League Cup games off the spin at home. Um, yeah. I mean, oh, I had that look. Um, yeah. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, May, May's, May's always interesting. Brighton, as you say, Brighton away, Chelsea at home, Arsenal away, Everton at home. Um, you know, two home games, two away games. Um, could have a cup final, of course, at the end of all that as well. Um, wishful thinking on my behalf. Uh, the games, the, the games that you always look look towards as well, or at least I do, is uh, always look for my birthday, which is in February. Um, we uh, we're, we're actually playing the day before my birthday, Manchester City away, which which is interesting. Um, and then you're always looking at the Christmas period, I guess. The Christmas games are always interesting. 26, which is Boxing Day, of course. We've got Aston Villa at home. Uh, uh, sandwich between Boxing Day and New Year. We've got Manchester United away on the 29th. And then uh, January, we herald the New Year uh, on the 4th with an away trip to Tottenham. So, uh, yeah, Boxing Day at home. Um, I think that's all you can ask for, really. Yeah, absolutely. Because all those years where Sunderland would get it, it was something ridiculous. We we got something like, and I'm obviously I'll be wrong. Yeah, but we got like three out of about twenty games. It's it's home over yeah. over twenty odd years, which seems so unjust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't get it. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. That's great. I love I love a Boxing Day game. I really really do. Um, so yeah, good good fixtures. And I'm really really pleased with them. Really pleased with those. So, and no of course, great. we don't script the show. You mentioned Sunderland, and uh, here's Sunderland's Premier League fixture. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's a tough start, of course, in August, uh, but looks a bit better in uh, September. October, November could be tricky. December, they've got a decent Christmas, apart from Boxing Day, of course. Uh, but yeah, uh, Sunderland AFC Premier League fixture. Thanks to the people who sent me that uh, the show on the show. Is that seven course. in a row they're no longer going to be in, or eight? I don't know. I've lost count now. I, I, I really can't remember. They'll not be making a DVD about that, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, never, never grows old uh, when you see something like that. It certainly doesn't. Uh, OK, the Euros have started. Um, and, obviously, England got off to a, uh, a comfortable start, I guess. A 1-0 win against uh, Serbia, Mitrovic and all. 
Um, should have been more, really. Uh, should have should have took their chances. Um, but overall, what was your what was your view on the England game? Um, and 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 you know how it panned out. The first game is always hard. It was it's just a win, isn't it? You sort of take it and. I mean, I, I think the first Europeans I can remember watching was the 1981 against Belgium. I can't remember now. Yeah. Great Ray Wilkins chip over the keeper. That was a fantastic goal. Um, and we barely ever win. We barely ever win the first game of a major competition. I believe the last time was one of the rare occasions. So I, I'll take the win. I thought we played brilliantly for 35 minutes. And, what, and I genuinely mean brilliantly. They just passed the ball around. They made them do all the running. They looked fantastic. I mean, Bellingham. Wow, what a player. He could yeah. be the most complete player of my lifetime for England. He, he really could be. Uh, he's got everything. He, the lad has literally got everything. He's got pace. He's got skill. He's got drive. He's got strength. He reads the game really well. He's mature. You know, he's got he's fabulous footballer. Fabulous footballer. Um, So, he was magnificent. I thought the first 35 minutes were great. Then the second last 10 minutes dropped off. And then the second half was like a different team. They were chasing, chasing after them. I, th I thought he should have taken Saka off much earlier, uh, who I thought was fantastic in the first half, may I add. I thought it was tremendous. He had him on toast. Uh, we, there was there was some really good performances. I th you know, I thought Rice was brilliant as a holding player. He's just great. What a great player he is. He just reads the game so, so well. I thought, uh, I'm just looking at my notes here. Guy or Gay, whichever way you want to pronounce it, had a really good game as a centre-half. I mean, the spine was really, really pretty solid, actually. Um, and who else? Yeah, and then there was the rest, not so great, <laughs> I think is the way, polite way of saying it. Trippier, not a left-back. I can't believe England have got one left-back. You know, it's... They should have taken another left back. So you've got, uh, is it Caldwell? Chilwell, sorry. They could have taken him. Um, he's not great, but they could have taken him and he does a decent job. They could have taken a lot of Kelly. You know, and I think the old job, because every time the bully comes in on his right foot, understandably, comes in on his right foot and you've lost that option of just whipping the ball outside. As a left foot of myself, you just whip the ball on the outside and somebody's going to be run under it. So... It's a, it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. And in some respects, I was pleased when didn't start because I think with Trippier, they ain't going to be able to pass the ball run properly in terms of whipping the ball over for him to fly over. It's all, always going to come on the right-hand side and spin around, um, which is not really what you want on the wing. Uh, I thought Trent Alexander-Arnold was not great. I thought he was poor. I thought, yes, he's got a great pass on him, but there was twice... In position, ran through. Maybe he should have scored off one of them. He would have got slaughtered if that had happened. He's not. He's not a holding midfielder. He's not a midfielder for me. I don't know what he is. Um, but he, he's. I'm sure he'll go and have a world class game next. But for me, for me, um, and I, I get disappointed when I see the likes of Gallagher coming on. I was talking to me mate. I've been playing golf that day, and I was talking to me mate. And texted him after after the match, and, uh, and I said, "Oh, Gallagher came on," and he said, "Oh, I'm watching. He's watching the US Open, which I watched later on." And he goes, uh, "In his exact words, were, I bet you the commentator said, oh, he'll bring energy,' which is another euphemism. Is he can't do very much, but he can run around a lot. I don't want that. I want a player with quality. Palmer was sat there doing nothing. He's a quality, quality player, potential to be a superstar. You've got Anthony Gordon that could have brought on. So guys who can run around a lot, but guys have actually got end product and real skill and speed. You've got far more, they've got far more about them than Gallagher's got. And I was so disappointed in the substitutions. I mean, the lad on the right, fair dues, he did really well when he came on and he whipped over a great cross, the lad from West Ham. So no problem with him at all. Uh, Jared Bowen. I think he's a good player, actually. He's not a great player, but yeah. he's a good player. I don't see. I don't see what people see in Gallagher. I genuinely don't see it. Maybe it's just me. You know, maybe it's just me. I just don't see it. Um, I, I thought the subs were poor. I thought they were late, too late, too conservative, and interesting that the Manchester United managers came out and slaughtered Southgate in terms of they got one nil up and then he just sits back. Mind you. He's obviously got an ulterior motive because he wants to keep his job and Southgate's the favourite to get the Man United job. Um, so you can see why he's having a little bit of a dig. But he's 
he's actually not a million miles out. Because, and I said this last week as well, England should have won the last Euros if they'd had an adventurous manager who just went for it at 1-0 up against Italy rather than just trying to hold out for a 1-0 win. Um, I thought Pickford had a good game. Great save at the end there. Fantastic. Um, you know, he's come on a lot, actually, in my opinion, in the last year or so. He seems to have matured quite a lot. Um, so, yeah, it was good workmanlike performance in the end, unfortunately, because the first half was great. You just got to hold the ball, just pass it and pass it and pass it, make them do all the running and then hit them on the break. We've got top, top players in our team. We've got two or three genuinely world-class players. And then we have the real problem with Phil Foden. Just play him in his proper position. Is it you like know? Lampard and Gerrard? I've made that point this week. Um, you know, absolutely. I, I think it is. It is. I said this. I said this earlier on today. Actually, it's exactly that. You know, the, the Lampard, Gerard, and Schools, and Sven Goran Eriksson. If he'd played a three, he could have in those days. He could have had any of them. Well, not not Lampard, but he could have certainly had Schools or Gerard as the holding player, and the other two further up, and they would have probably won something if that had been the case. But he didn't, and it's it's the same scenario now. Drop Bellingham back a little bit and let Ford and play. Ford is a world class footballer. Bellingham is unbelievable footballer. But, you know, let Foden play further up and let him do his stuff. We know how good he is. He won PFA Player of the Year. You don't win that by a fluke. Uh, and then for me, I would have Gordon on the left, Saka or Palmer on the right, and obviously Harry Kane. Let him do his stuff. Um, Kane will score. That's what he does. He scores goals. He was unlucky not to score. Great save by their goalkeeper, to be fair. But mm. uh, just... Poor selection, Trent, Trent Alexander on. But uh, what, what's really annoying as well is that there seems to be leaks to the press because the press knew the team about three days earlier. They've been promoting that team for, for a good few days beforehand. Oh, this is what the team's going to be like, the suggestions, this. It was exactly that team. You know, I, I don't think there should be any leaks. It should just be keep it all in-house and then surprise them on the time, you know. Um, so that was disappointing. Southgate's just a negative manager. And if we win the tournament and we have a real good chance of doing so, in my opinion, it'll be despite Southgate, not just because of Southgate, because he's just so negative. Well, on that negative comment. <laughs> no, no, I, I listen, I agree with you. I genuinely agree with you, but I, I can't see I can't see England winning this tournament. I think once we get into the knockout stages and we come up against a team such as Spain or you know, Germany, um, you know, even, dare I say, France, you know, th these kind of teams, I think they'll undo England. I, I just think there's a, I think there are weaknesses that are there for everybody to see. And we know, we almost saw it in that second game, in, in that first game, sorry, with um, with Serbia. We, you know, the second half, we were under pressure, um, you know, and, and I just, I just can't see us, I can't see us winning. I don't understand where this, I would say it's a false optimism comes from, but you know, so other people. I, I, I genuinely can see it because I because I think we have, and I totally agree with Shira. And I said this last week: we have the best front six in the world. I do genuinely think that. Only I, if they're I played think, in the only if they're played in the way that's going to benefit the team. Well, the that, that's so. that's exactly the point. That's that's exactly the point. Only if they're played properly in their proper positions, not square pegs. I mean. Trippier. I really wouldn't be starting Trippier as left back or right back. I think he had a quite a poor second half of the season. He wouldn't he wouldn't have been picked for me. And um I would definitely have a different left person as the left back. Even going three at the back and having a left centre half, just so you've got somebody with a left foot. Um they, they need to change it up a little bit. I, I, I the first 35 minutes, that's as good a performance I've seen from England in years in terms of just pick, passing it really fast player. They absolutely out, 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 you know, outclassed them for 35 minutes. I thought, wow, this is some performance. Then they just sort of dropped off a cliff. So, mm. okay, uh, we are going to have a quick break um, and we will be back with a little bit of music after this. A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. You can find their website at skipsandbins.com. Contact us www.skipsandbins.com forward slash contact. Say hello to low-cost waste disposal with pay-as-you-go and contract waste management. A big thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, handmade in Cumbria. Their website, mrvickies.co.uk. Email info at mrvickies.co.uk. Telephone 01768 
210102. Thanks to United Group Travel, they are the Travel and Tourism Award winners in 2024. Their website, www.unitedgrouptravel.com. Email, beverly.ugtl at gmail.com. Or telephone 01670 632 460. Or mobile 0791 666 4174. Just £30 per person deposit. There are no strangers on our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. A big thanks to Media Arts. You can find them at www.media-arts.co.uk. And don't forget, we are a podcast. You can find us on iTunes or Spotify or other podcast providers. If you want to help the channel grow, then hit the like button, the little thumb underneath the video. Click share and share to your social media or join the channel for as little as $1.99 a month. If you want to take out a one-off payment membership, go to nufcmatters.com and hit membership. And for a £25 fee, you get a scarf, a cup, a pen and a membership card. You can also put a smartphone over the top of this QR code. It'll take you straight there. And don't forget, we also help the food bank on this channel. NUFCfansfoodbank.co.uk is a website where you can make a virtual donation today. And don't forget as well, the end of season do takes place at the uh, Tyneside Irish Centre, 20th of July, and uh, Supermac and Gibbo and uh, George and the Longsands are going to put on the entertainment. It is £10 a ticket, nufcmatters.com and newcastlelegends.com for your tickets for that event. And Rob Lee and Gibbo uh, will be at the City Hall. Tickets are £15 and you can uh, get your tickets from ticketmaster.co.uk and uh, that should be a cracking event. Get your tickets for that one now. And don't forget as well, Supermat and Gibbo uh, will be at the uh, uh, Gator Leisure Centre pre-match for the England games. So the first game that we have uh, was, was <laughs> well attended. The, the second game um, against Denmark, four o'clock start for that one. And then it's an eight o'clock kickoff. So it'll be a seven o'clock for, uh, for the next one. But uh, yeah, should be a great, should be a great atmosphere. Let's hope England uh, can continue to get the results. I love how you got a, 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 a modern picture of Gibbo and an old picture of Sue. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, there's, there's, very, there's some rare photos. Some rare. It's rare to get a photo of John. I think that's what it is. There's plenty of supermarkets. But uh, yeah, Gated Leisure Centre uh, picked those out of the uh, out of the internet ether, and uh, I know how difficult it is to find a photograph of our good mate John. But uh, great, uh, great stuff. And Malcolm will be on uh, tomorrow. Um, he'll be doing a Q and A at eleven o'clock in the morning. So if you are about, make sure you tune in. Get your questions in. Uh, as always, the second half of the show, we do do the music. No Rob today. Internet has let him down, unfortunately. I'm sure he'll be back next week. Uh, but we will still play his intro. And uh, Rob did manage to send in this. This would have been his uh, album that he wouldn't be reviewing. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm glad he wasn't going to review that album. But we'll, we'll keep it as a surprise for what he was going to do. Uh, so uh, we've got a chance. I'm going to send you one of a proper album. Right. Uh, is, is it Millie Jackson or something like that? I'm going to send you because it's absolutely insane. Uh, a proper album sleeve as well from about 82. <laughs> it's crazy. I'll send it to you. So it gives us an opportunity to promote songs from the attic 1977 yeah. again, and um, there we go. Uh, this is uh, this is the Ramones albums ranked, and, and uh, that was the clue uh, that you gave away with the name that you chose on screen today, Sid Ramone. Yeah, so we've done we've ranked for the 14 studio albums, and my best mate Ian's on it, and he wanted to talk about uh, "It's Alive" on as well. He what he thought I thought it was fair enough actually. It's a great live album, so he wanted to include that. So we do 15 albums and we rank them, and it's the longest show we've done. So it's about two hours long, but we just laugh 
quite a lot because there's some stupid anecdotes on it. There's one of them which I didn't I didn't realize. <laughs> I'm laughing about it now. They did, <laughs> you know, when all the Band Aid songs are really, really they like, they would come out and all that, and they're like, "This is We Are the World" and all that. Now the Ramones did it like a, a mic take version where they did they had the whole four of them and they were all singing a song together with the whole. <laughs> And when it pans, it pans out, they're actually around a urinal. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> so it's just brilliant. They're a crazy band. They never yeah, they are. Years, you know, if you watch, there's a great documentary out there, folks. Even if you're not into the Ramones or like punk music at all, there's a great documentary worth watching where the it, you discover that uh, Johnny and Joey, um, Joey Ramone was going out with this girl called Linda. He went away. He went away for a few days. Came back. Johnny stole her as his girlfriend, and they never spoke again for the next 14, 15 years, ever. Wow! Like in the car, in the van, never spoke. Uh, and there's the famous song, "The KKK Took My Baby Away," which is all about that <laughs> situation. They're a crazy band. They are, um, like, and they become synonymous with Newcastle as well, of course. Because yeah, well, part of they, Rob Byron and the stadium announcers music. Yeah, I was good. We, we mentioned that on the show because um, we sometimes get an American guy in as well as he doesn't understand that. But uh, we talked about that. And one of the lads who's on there was from Brighton and he didn't get it. In fact, I'm not sure where we get Blitzkrieg bot from at the match, but it works absolutely perfectly pre match build up. And Long May It Continue is one of the warm up songs, but it's such a, um, it's such a contrast between that and local hero in terms of musical terms, they're like other ends of the spectrum, but they work great. I'd, I'd certainly advocate having Thunderstruck is the other one that's thrown in there as well. And yeah. uh, and, I, and I've mentioned this before and I'll might as well bring it up now, actually, is um, my, my big bugbear is that it, Hey Jude is now ubiquitous around all the grounds in the country. Everybody's doing it. Can we not just do something a little bit different? Yes, it's fantastic. Yes, brilliant song great thing but it's just everybody does it yeah. you know my personal choice and i know i'd be shot down would be something like run for home you know um by lindis fawn or just something that links with the local area or a sam fender or whatever it might be or acdc you know that sort of tie-in uh, but i would like to see something a little bit more that means something to the area rather than just the same song everybody else is doing so, yeah. you know, I don't know what other people think about it. Yes, the atmosphere does get rocking when, when Hey Jude comes on. I'm not going to deny it. It's, and it is great. And we're all whipping around, waving the, waving the flags. But something different, something local would be really, really nice. So that's that's a real bugbear of mine. I would like to yeah, see that. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I think, uh, I mean, Hey Jude has become synonymous with not just Newcastle, as you say, but countless other clubs. And, you know, it, it does get people going, but... You know, I, I do think that but potentially they could find something local. There's plenty of tunes out there, you know. Um, you know, World Collide, by, just World just Collide by the Long Dance. Uh, just imagine the whole ground singing it, running for home. Just break, I can imagine it, you know. Well, yeah, I think I, I think it, it's all down to it's all down to people behind the scenes. Rob Rob just plays what he's told. You know what I mean? He's 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 probably come up with his own suggestions in the past, but. Um, you know, I dare say that there's the, there are other people who have their say about these kind of things. You know, but um, yeah, in, interesting, interesting point. Um, I'd much rather we've got a centre forward over the line um, than than change the music. Like, but, uh, fair point. Small world problems. So, um, you were going to review the Ramones, and um, when you yeah. get a, a review off Rob, but what what what, what were you going to what were you going to? I was going to review the first Ramones album. Which um, and I mentioned on the show, I never heard it till really late. It was something like 1987 when I first heard it, which is 11 years after it first came out. Which is odd because I was massively into punk rock, um, and so not to have heard the Ramones album is just weird, really. And I didn't hear it until I bought a big box of cassettes off this guy. <laughs> yes, those were the days. When we those were the days. Buy cassettes and sell them. And uh, I remember there was that, and there was the Talking Heads Marquee Moon album, and it's other great albums. And, sorry, Talking Heads, sorry, um, television and Talking Heads albums, and so on and so forth. And I played it, and I, I thought, wow, this is unbelievable. How did how did they never heard the Ramones' first album? 29 minutes of sheer brilliance, 14 songs in 29 minutes. What more do you want? And it sounds, it's lo fi, yet sounds superb. It absolutely sounds magnificent. Um, it, it is. It's just a great, great album. Came out in April 76. 
nobody else in the world was doing this sort of music. It was just like, it was almost like dropped out of Mars. It's so different. Bearing in mind what was going on in the charts at the time. That's, uh, I mean, the Ramones are one of those bands to me. They're, they're, they're a sort of odd band where they've got elements of, say, the Bay City Rollers, the Shangri-Las and the Ronettes and all those sort of bands. You've got like Early Who and the Kinks. The sort of just one big amalgamation and the Beach Boys as well, of course, big chunk of the Beach Boys thrown in there. And they just make brilliant poppy punk records. Certainly the early stuff's just outstanding. Um, but it's just a great album. It's just... 14 songs of brilliance. I mean, it kicks off for Blitzkrieg Bop, as we know, it comes on at St. James's Park. So it, I, it's hard not to think of the match now when I hear that song. So in a, a weird sort of way, it's sort of slightly spoiled it because I love it. <laughs> I, lo I love it at the match. And it's sort of, it's hard to hear it out of that context now. There's a, some other great songs, funny lyrics. I mean, the lyrics are, are just, are, are a bit mad. You've got songs about like, you know, violence, drug use, relationships, Nazism. <laughs> <laughs> but they're just funny. They're good, funny, funny lyrics as well. Beat on the brat's a great song. Beat on the bat with a baseball bat. Oh yeah! And people genuinely thought they were meaning to do it, and it wasn't. It was just a sort of tongue-in-cheek thing. Judy's a punk's another great song, really fast and fun. I want to be a boyfriend. Fits in with that sort of Shangri-La sort of thing. It's really just lovely '60s jangly feel to it. And then you've got Chainsaw, which is based on Chainsaw Massacre. But because they can't get the rhyme with massacre, they've got the word massacre, which, <laughs> which is weird. <laughs> massacre, and it's got baby away with it. So I'm not sure how that works, but it does. Uh, some other songs, Now I Want to Sniff Some Glue, which is, <laughs> which is fantastic. And I was saying on the show... People forget about glue sniffing. I mean, when I was a kid, there'd be empty glue bags everywhere on the way to school. It was just this. I mean, I never did it myself, but it was one of those weird sort of things. People, people used to stash them in their drain pipes as well. If you had an upstairs, if you slept upstairs, you would stash them in your drain pipe in the top. I'm not, I'm not speaking from experience. I just know people who did it. And then those people who progressed from glue bags went on to where beauty and gas um, started yeah. sniffing gas. So uh, none of these things I would advise you to do at home. Yeah, people, I'm not endorsing. Not. We're not endorsing it we're just telling you what it was like in the, yeah. in the good old in the good old days just mad uh, and so i remember as i say when i had the shop i had the sniffing glue magazine i had the first one made by danny baker and mark perry uh mark perry the punk band atv of course um so yeah that, that sort of spawned the magazines and the magazine culture that came around through this i mean the ramones spawned 100 punk bands at least i mean the clash were massively influenced by the ramones but no no other punk band was influenced by the ramones more than the undertones their first album is almost like a ramones tribute album mind you it's equally as brilliant may i add uh, other songs loudmouth is a classic i love the drums at the end of it with tommy who wasn't really much of a drummer but he just works perfectly with the band and he sort of and he was also the uh, part-time producer as well uh loudmouth which is classic yeah sorry i've said that have an affairs great uh, 53rd, and th 53rd and 3rd is a weird one. It's about Dee Dee, the bass player, and about him being a rent boy in America. Um, so, I mean, they didn't have it easy, I think is the phrase I'm going to use. They do a great cover of Let's Dance by Chris Montez, which I think that's right. It's, a it's even better than the original. It's just perfect. And then Today You Love, Tomorrow the World is an absolute classic to finish on. So if, if I had to say go and pick one Ramones album to give them a try, the first Ramones album is the one I would pick. Um, it's breathtaking. It's 29 minutes, so it's not a long time. You're not going to be sort of having to end your 45 minutes or an hour of anything. 45, you know, 29 minutes, 30 minutes is perfect amount of time for Ramones for me. It's just brilliant. It's sheer great bubblegum pop. Uh, just brilliant. What? How different were they at the time? I mean, you could, the charts were, were pretty bad in '76. There's some good stuff, but there's some less so great stuff, I think is the polite way of seeing it. And then you've got the Ramones just coming in and being plonked in the middle of this. It must have it's just so, so different. And they changed the landscape of everything. And of course, you got the big punk explosion from Britain subsequently as well, with bands like the Pistols and the Damned and the Clash and the Adverts and all those other great bands that sort of Buzzcocks and all those great bands who subsequently came along. So yeah, Ramones, top, top band. And I was fortunate enough to see them twice. Uh, the Mayfair, which was the better gig, and then the where was the other one? The 
the university, and they had, a be- they had a bass player called CG on who took over from Didi, who bizarrely, who bizarrely became a rap artist. Wow. <laughs> Which is quite a change. And CJ was not great, I think is the polite way of saying it. He was he was basically like the scrappy do of the Ramones. He was quite irritating. But um, but there you have it. That's uh, that was my Ramones bit there. Yeah, great band. You know what's really sad about the Ramones is they're all dead. All four of that classic lineup's dead. There's only Marky now from the the, the, the next lineup uh, who's still alive, really, of the proper lineups. And uh, that's a real shame. That's a real shame. And they've never had their financial, they never got their financial dues. Everybody's got a Ramones t shirt. You know, everybody knows, but they maybe don't know the music as much. It's, it's really, really sad. Really, really sad. Because a band like that, can you imagine them now doing Glastonbury or something, doing the, you know, their Sunday afternoon slot for 75 minutes? That went down an absolute storm. So, what a shame. What up? Okay, uh, you always bring us a, a little bit of literature as well. What what have I you do. chosen this week? I have chosen The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which is a fabulous book. It's part of the Millennium series, so there's three books in all. Uh, we've got The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Girl Who Played with Fire, and The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest by Stig Larson, who was a journalist, and he, he basically came up with the first book, which is this. Uh, about a character called Elizabeth Elizabeth Salander. I'm trying to get my pronunciations right. And Mikael Blomqvist, who's the, the journalist, bizarrely, in this, who's almost like a detective as well. Um, it, and it's just, I'm not going to go into much of the story. It's, it's just beautifully written. And the real sad thing about this is that uh, Stieg Larsson died before the book came out. And it's a multi-million bestseller. And it's uh, it's it's really really sad that he didn't he just didn't get to see this work of three books of in my opinion absolute genius. Uh, he didn't get a penny of it. Didn't get to see more importantly didn't get to see it just take off. And and it's just beautifully written all three of them. Really great story. A strong, powerful female character which is not that common in literature. Certainly up to this point in the early two thousand and five when it came out and. She, in, in many respects, the, the character transformed literature because we have now a, a, a lot more female powerful characters and her character is probably the one that sort of helped do that. Uh, if you get the chance to watch the films, the British f- sort of American films, all right with Daniel Craig, but the Scandinavian one, the extended one's much better. Really, really pretty good adaptions, actually. The three of them are good adaptions. So top, top draw. And don't buy any of the other books that have come afterwards because they're rubbish. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> They're just absolute garbage. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work. But the first, the three that he wrote are superb, outstanding. What a writer. All right. Good stuff. Thanks for uh, that, uh, Rob. See you next week, hopefully, mate. I uh, hope you're well. Um, this has been circulated on social media, Sid, as the potential uh, away yeah. strip. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on that? Nice. Looks absolutely spot on. I mean, obviously, there's a big overture to the 96 strip. Uh, and uh, we had one very similar a few years ago, actually, didn't we? Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm all in favour of it. As I say, the, the quality of the of the Adidas gear is just tremendous. But um, yeah, I'm I'm all in favour of. I like it. It's a little nod to sort of past eras. You don't want you don't want everything to replicate past strips, though. You want this. And uh, I watched the guy with the the show with the guy that you had on who in, sort of came up with ideas and concepts. You want to yeah. see something new because you want that strip. To be the one everybody looks back in 20 years to and go, oh, isn't that a great strip? So I totally agree with them. You've got to be out there. And sometimes you've got to be hated at times to do something a little bit different. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so I- I'm quite in favour of it. Uh, have you seen the, the, the story about the, the goalkeeper strip, though? Apparently there's about 10 other, stri- 10 other teams have got virtually the same strip as the, as the, as the Newcastle goalkeeping strip. Yeah, so yeah, the, what, it's funny enough because I'd, I'd picked up on that. Chris Brady there, Chicago Fire. Yeah. Um, against Toronto in the MLS. Um, then you've got uh, Gian Ligi Donnarumma, uh, Italy against Albania, of course. Yeah. Um, we've just seen him uh, in the Euros wearing that top. And then we've got this guy, <laughs> Yohei Takoka from Vancouver Whitecaps, playing I've in, the, somewhere in, before. in the MLS. But yeah, so it's... Um, it's simply, uh, it's simply a top which you know they, you know they've designed for goalkeepers, and uh, it's going out carte blanche to anyone and everyone, isn't it? Yeah, it's. A, I think it's a strange choice, isn't it? You know, 
I just love the old one, like the Pav one, as I call it, with the Tyne Bridge and all that sort of stuff on in the background. And um, so, yeah, that's yeah. I would, yeah. I'm not quite sure the purpose of that. I can see why they've done it in some respects, but mm. yeah, I don't. I don't like the idea of everybody having the same top. It seems to take a little bit of the sort of exclusivity sort of aspect from it, doesn't it? Dubravka was interviewed uh, prior to the Euros. Kept a clean sheet, of course, in uh, that, that game um, that um, was played this week. And uh, oh, how did you see it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was a strange <laughs> game, a very strange game. But they are uh, once again with uh, uh, the various new methods that they're using and, and, and hoping to introduce worldwide. Uh, played their part. Some of it's better, some of it's worse, uh, some of it's indifferent. But uh, yeah, Dubravka before the game, uh, you know, in the build-up of the tournament, you know, more or less saying that he's he's more or less sick and tired of everything that's been speculated on. He's just going to crack on and, and what will be will be. That was his attitude, wasn't it? I thought it was quite poor, if I'm being honest. I thought it was, like, it was almost like, I think it was, was, it was a line about, I mean, something about, I don't know what the line was, but he it, 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 it appeared to be not bothered and I thought that's not something you really want to hear from a player, you know. Um, I think he could have phrased things a little bit better. I'm sure he probably meant to do so, really, because he's, you know, it was, it was poorly worded. If he'd come out along the lines of, at the minute, my focus has to be on the Europeans, and I'll look at my Newcastle career afterwards, and then I'll look at everything else afterwards. But at the minute, I'm just solely focused on this, and I don't want to focus on anything else. Then I would have said, hey, that's absolutely great. But that wasn't exactly what he said. And I just thought it was very, very poor. He will not be here next year. I will be stunned and amazed if he's here on in the end of August. Absolutely amazed. Obviously, Trafford looks like he's coming in. And we said last week, if Trafford comes in as a number two, then that's a great shout. Mm. Um, I, As I said to you last week, I would have preferred to have had a straight in number one. and But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So Trafford is a good number two. Um, by option, by the looks of it, you know, if if that's the case, um, and obviously it's cheaper. I think yeah. finance obviously must come into it somewhere along the lines, rather than spending forty off. Or the goalposts seem to have got changed on Mamadashvili um, from a, an original quoted price. By the sounds of things, I, I don't know. I'm not in the know. Um, from sounds like from thirty five, forty million to slightly more. So that's that's a real shame because he he looks a top top goalkeeper. But there's this 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 there's more out there if, if needs be. So what's interesting is watching the Europeans and how poor the standard of goalkeeping actually is. Yeah. That's, that's quite worrying. There's not many great keepers out there at the moment. There's a few, but not many. And so there'll be a big battle, I think, for everyone to try and get the same goalkeepers. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. And of course the Euros always slows these things down. Uh other than you since we last spoke, mate, was the membership. Just one second. Do you think we'll get any money for Dubravka? Mm, yeah, I think if he if he goes, I think we would. Yeah, I mean that that's the question, isn't it? One or two players who we're, we're going to get off the books. There's a fee there to be had, but yeah, I think Dubravka would would command a fee. You know, ten ten million, maybe slightly more, but not not a great deal. But I do think we'd get something off him. Yeah, Ooh, that's interesting. I, I would have I would have I would have said none, but we'll see. It will. I hope, yeah, I hope, I hope I, you're right, and I'm not. Yeah, I do think we'd get something off him. Yeah, I mean, you know, Manchester United, I think, you know, were quoted as, you know, were they not quoted 10 to 15 million? Because they gave us 3 million from, didn't they, for that loan yeah. spell, which was quite a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we'll get something for him, but it, it, it remains to be seen. Um, memberships uh, came out, um, with the announcement came out. Uh, they obviously, re, you know, rejigged it a bit. It's the Mag and the Mags Plus now. Uh, pricing for the standard membership is £37, which is a price freeze. Uh, but there's a new plus option, which is 47 and that includes various off-field benefits. Uh, but also access to match ticket ballots and resale is the same for both options. So, it, you know, they, we waited a long time for this. And, you know, we, yeah, if you're a season ticket holder, it's, you know, you, you get everything that the £37 package gives you. You can, you can though up it for £10 and I think can you do that can you I've never done that so well we can do and, and I think what that gets us is it gets us access to the two friendlies there's going to be two friendlies screened on on any UFC TV um, so it'd be the equivalent of paying for the match really and you know but yeah you can up you can up it um, you can upgrade from the mags to mags plus um, but you've got to pay £10 so you know I, I mean I would imagine quite a few Newcastle fans will probably do that um there's no mention of any cap on the membership numbers this season though which is well, what everybody would 
Why would they? Because they'd be mad to do so. They'd be mad yeah. to do so. And, is... and the details of how the ticket ballot process are going to work haven't been disclosed. So, but that's ultimately that's what people wanted to know because I've seen a lot of people on social media go, "I'm not going to bother getting a membership this year because I didn't get a ticket. I didn't yeah. get, I didn't get, a, I didn't get a chance to get a ticket last it's year." It's understandable, and you see certain people who get membership seem to go to most games, which is always a surprise. I mean, there are there are ways around it. I mean, the obvious way to do it is let's say out of five games. If you get a ticket on the first game, then you're not allowed to go to the second game, and then everyone moves up one, or you move down to the bottom of the list, and everybody gets the, and everybody further down goes it goes in a list, and so you go you go in a sort of rotation system, and that's the that's the. But, then it, but then, then it wouldn't be then it wouldn't be a ballot. I mean, George I know, was, I know, George I know. Was... I'm just I'm giving a, I'm giving my perspective, um, and it's just to try and make it fairer for everybody, you know. Because you're, you're always you're always going to get somebody. Fun. Using that method, depending on how many members you've got, you are always going to have somebody who doesn't get a ticket then. So then how do you decide the order on, on I'm, that? I'm not, sure, I'm not sure you are, because I don't know how many season tickets we have. I genuinely don't know. I know it's nowhere near as many people think it is. And uh I think so it's I think it's around the I think it's around the 37, 30, 36, 37 thousand mark. I think that was that was the last I think that was the last kind of mark we got. Then you've got the corporates. And then you've got to put a percentage of tickets aside for away fans, which is up to two thousand, I think. And so you've then got about you've... ten to twelve thousand tickets, really, per game, is what I would suggest. And and a, and a, you know, allegedly thirty-eight thousand members last year. But then you're going to get a certain percentage from abroad who will get tickets for the game because they, they might pay more as well, and I'd have no problem with that at all. So um, thirty-eight thousand members. Let's just say that's accurate, but we don't know that it is. Yeah. And then you and you just said how many tickets? Ten thousand, twelve thousand tickets. Yes, yeah, like that. Spare each week, so you know. You could do it. You could do it one in five. You could do it one in five where you get a ticket. Hmm. Um, I don't think there's twelve thousand tickets available on a match day. By the way, I'm I probably wrong. I think that's miles away. I think I think there's I think there's hmm. two thousand tickets available, and I think that that's my opinion. Really? But I think there's only, as low as that day. Yeah, because I think there's about 38,000 season ticket holders. And then I think on top of that, you've got the corporate. Now, I don't know what the corporate is, but let's just say 2,000 away fans for those games yeah. where we sell out. So that's 40,000. Mm. That leaves us 12,000 tickets. And then you've got X amount of boxes and all those lounge and, and the lounges, um, which are sold on a, on, you know, can be sold on a match to match basis. So I think, I think we've got a couple of thousand tickets to play with for 38,000 people. That's what I think. And I think yeah. there will be there will be tickets, as you said, will go to foreign foreign supporters, clubs, etc. There'll be a yeah. few tickets going to obviously friends, friends, friends. Well, players, families uh, get tickets for free. Uh, we do know that, you know, the certain certain people get tickets for free. So it, it it all adds up. Then you've got to fit the press in. I'm sure that I'm sure when you have the press and and, and those in, the press box has to be the press box has to be considered part of the attendance surely because that's a seat in the ground so that's a shortage of that you know they you, you know i don't know but I, I think i just don't think there is an opportunity for every single person to get a ticket in the ballot i just think game. it's really sad that people can spend that amount of money and then not get a ticket i just think that that to me doesn't seem right there must be a way there must be an, a, an algorithm or some program where they can click in and see if somebody's got a ticket or not, you know. And I appreciate that it removes the access to the idea of a sort of ballot. Then I appreciate that. I just think everybody should have an opportunity, and it, it just feels wrong if that's the case. It just doesn't feel right if if you've got a family of four and you've spent a lot of money and they've not got a ticket for the whole year. You think, wow, you spent like 130, 40 quid, and you've got nothing, you know. And you think, wow, you know, that just that to me just doesn't feel quite right, you know. So oh, I hope they do something about it and sort of resolve it. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, it's not my job to sort of resolve it and come up with a solution. I'm just sort of e expressing my viewpoint there, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I get you. A um, couple of departures from the academy and one I only noticed. Um, I didn't realise Ian Bogie'd left. He was, uh, I mean, Ian sits next to me at the match and he's 
he was the under 16 coach and he really? left in he left in January so we're talking six months ago now so that that's that's something which I missed um and it wasn't well publicized I found it while I was surfing the internet on uh, the Chronicles website to, to find something else out about Newcastle United and I, I stumbled across that for some reason but Graham Carrick's now left um the uh enforced change to the staff at Newcastle's Academy he's got to join his brother hasn't he with the current under-18 coach, Graham Carrick, expected to leave the club. Yeah, so he's been tempted to to join Championship side Middlesbrough, which, of course, is managed by his elder brother, Michael. Um, so, interesting, another another change of uh, another change of personnel. And Newcastle's under-16 lead coach for the new season is a, is a familiar name, um, Brazil, Jack Brazil. And he is the son of former Newcastle forward, Gary Brazil. Um, Brazil, wow. Remember him? Uh, sort of, just at least it's not Alan Brazil, but uh... yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, th th there's little changes going on at the academy, I guess, all the time that we probably miss. But um, no surprise to hear Graham Carrick going to join his brother. To be fair, no, no I think that's fair enough. You, you can't blame him, can you? You know, it's fair to it's good luck to the lad. Um, and you know, they might even take some of our players out on loan for a little bit as well. Some of the younger players that would be very beneficial. There are yeah. a couple of them who could really. That might do them the world of good to spend six months in the championship, you know. I mean, you know, I, I'm not sure which ones, but it might do. It might do. There are others really on the verge of breaking at the first team anyway, the likes of all, uh, Harrison and stuff. But it might be nice to see some of the other young lads be taken down there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good luck, though. Good luck, though. Yeah. So we started we started the show with England. We'll finish the show with England. And uh, we've got Denmark on Thursday. Um you know, what are you what are you expecting from that game? Are you expecting Anthony Gordon to get a run out? Yes. I'm gonna have a go that he'll drop Trent and he'll put Foden in his correct position. I'm I'm probably talking absolute garbage here, by the way. Uh, and uh I think he'll stick I'd like to see Gordon on the left. And just go at them. Absolutely go at them. I think we could tear them apart. I really do. And I am going to go for 3-0. 3-0. I am. I'm going for 3-0. I can't see why not. Denmark don't have an awful lot going for them for me. Um, they've got an all right strike. Other man United lad. All right. He's not great, is he? Let's be honest. He's no better than the likes of say, Ferguson, for example, at Brighton. Um, so yeah, definitely, yeah. If we, yeah, I'll expect us to win three nil. I'm, I'm confident. All right, which would take depending us, on the manager. That would take us uh, into uh, into the next round. So obviously, Southgate wants to finish top of the group, and um, coming up, of course, after that, we've got Slovenia, which uh, takes place next Tuesday. So we'll have a look at that game uh, next Tuesday when we uh, we do the show. But um, I'm not as confident. I've got to be honest. I, I think it'll be another tight game against Denmark. I'm. I, I was convinced we would draw against Serbia, but would beat Denmark. So I'm going to go for a going to go for a two-one win against Denmark. Well, I, I said Serbia would be the hardest game, and I and I'm, I'm stick by that because they've got they're a pretty good team. I expect them to be the other team that get qualify with us. Mm. Okay. Um, they're a good team. They're a good team. Well, Sid, as always, been a pleasure, mate. Look yeah. forward to seeing you next Tuesday. No Have problem. a good week. Take, Take care, care, mate. Look after yourself. Bye bye.